these are 21 things I quit to simplify my life. And just a quick disclaimer, I am in no way saying this is the right way to live your life. This is simply me saying these are some of the things that I quit that I didn't even think about before but I don't do anymore and they've actually improved my life and simplified my life, gave me some of my time back and maybe you might benefit from some of these as well. So feel free to go through this list and see what applies to you and what might be useful for you. Because a lot of times we feel like we're just going really fast through our days, we're just, you know, one day rolls into the next and we're so used to some of these things, either seeing them on social media or just in society in general and so we don't even second guess them but some of these things we actually could quit and simplify our life have more time for other stuff that actually means something to us maybe save some money so i do think you'll find a few helpful things in this list number one i quit looking on pinterest for lots of new recipe ideas all the time this is something i used to do and if you go back to my you know food videos recipe videos you will see that i was always kind of looking for new ideas new recipes to try i just felt like i had to bring a lot of variety to our meals but i have found that actually i don't need to have all of these fancy recipes that require 20 different ingredients that i don't even have in my cupboard I go out and buy and then I use a tiny amount of that ingredient and then I'm left with that ingredient that I never use again and it's just it feels a bit wasteful and then also it requires a lot more time for me to go through the recipe make sure I follow the steps and so what I'm doing now to simplify my meals and recipes is just just make it easy. I created a list on my phone of some of the recipes that I use on a regular basis, recipes that I've made for maybe years and I know how to make by heart so I don't need to have the recipe in front of me and when I meal plan every Sunday I sit down go through that list and pick five dinner recipes and that's it. Quick and easy, simplified my life, takes way less time. Number two, I quit doing big food shops in person. Now ordering grocery deliveries can be expensive I guess and depending on the area or the service that you use but for our family we use Tesco delivery. They've got this subscription thing, I think it's about eight pounds per month and you can get unlimited deliveries. This is not sponsored by the way, it's just what we use. But for us, since we order one big food shop every single week, that means it comes down to about two pounds for each delivery. So that's really convenient for us. It doesn't cost too much and it saves me so much time and headache. Like honestly, I have a baby and a six year old and I honestly feel like if I go with them, I can't focus to get everything on my list. There's a lot more impulse buying going on as well. And so it just saves me time and money. It's just brilliant. I do still go in the shops you know throughout the week to get bits and bobs here and there but having the stress of that big food shop that's gone because i just do that online number three is buying or keeping plastic bags i don't really store plastic bags anymore we have two or three carrier bags like reusable ones that we use over and over again and those are the ones i take with me when we go shopping very rarely you know some things just come in plastic bags and it's inevitable but for the most part i don't buy them yeah that's simplified a lot as well and they don't take up that much space in my house either hands up if you've got a plastic bag of bags I used to do that too. <laughs> Number four, storing Tupperware without lids. Felt like I was saving space in my cupboard because I had the Tupperware, you know, just kind of stacked into each other. But then you have all of these lids on the side of it that kind of fling around in the drawer. You make a mess, you can't find the lid when you need it. It's just chaotic. So now I just store each one of them with a the lid on. It actually doesn't take up that much space because honestly, how much Tupperware do we really need in our lives? I have this one drawer with, you know, kind of different sizes of Tupperware and that's it. And they're all glass um, containers for us. Number five is testing skincare. It can be so tempting, right? You go into the shops, they're beautifully displayed. They all have these amazing claims on them, you know, removing wrinkles, making you look young, making your skin look nourished and pretty. And it can be very tempting to buy a lot of skincare. But what I have found is that having less and kind of testing less skincare on my face makes a big difference. So I am just sticking to a few basics that I've loved for years and that's what i use every single day and honestly it's just a few items mostly cerave 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 product because they don't have fragrance they're very plain are they the best for you i don't know but they work really well for my skin and i don't feel the need to be constantly testing new skincare on myself number six is feeling like i constantly have to keep up on the trends this is something that i've had to be a bit more conscious about and kind of maybe unfollow a few accounts that i was following on instagram and on youtube as well because it can be so easy to fall into the trap of 
oh, I need this new trouser that's in right now because the old jeans that I have are not in. And for me, it's more about finding my own style and the things that I love to wear that make me feel good, that feel flattering on myself. Yeah, so I don't look out for specific trends. I just try to stick to what I know makes me feel good to wear. Number seven is buying something because it's on sale. I used to love bargain shopping and it's tricky, you know, because you feel like, oh, it's a good sale and if I don't buy it right now, I'm gonna miss out. But for the most part, it's usually stuff that we don't really need or we don't really want. And just because the price tag says it's on sale doesn't mean we have to buy it. You're not missing out if you're not buying that item. And honestly, sales in shops and wherever, sales come again and again. You'll always find things for that price. You can always go on Vinted and buy pre-loved, which is what I do now. And I feel like that's taken a bit of pressure off of, you know, feeling like I constantly have to get that bargain because you can find most things on Vinted for a bargain anyway. Number eight, shopping as a way of dealing with feelings. If you know my story, we have gone through quite a few years of infertility, baby loss, and just a lot of struggles when it comes to that. I'm so grateful now we have our second baby. I will honestly never take that for granted. But during those years of infertility, I do feel like I relied on shopping as a way of kind of covering up my feelings or you know whenever I felt down or sad or I had something anxious going on like fertility testing I would go and buy something new because it made me feel good in the moment but looking back maybe it would have been more useful to kind of deal with those feelings in a different way if you're in a situation that's bringing you down and you're using shopping as a way of dealing with that you know no judgment because I know it can be tricky to find a different way to deal with that kind of stuff but for me I realized I was actually just filling my house with a lot of clutter a lot of stuff that I didn't really need and yeah that's something I'm a lot more mindful about these days number nine I quit most of the ironing sorry mom if you're watching this I very rarely iron our system for the laundry is that once clothes are out of the washer we hang dry them and for anything that's more wrinkle prone I will put it on a hanger like t-shirts jumpers you know shirts dresses i'll put it on a, on a hanger to dry and i always kind of like stretch a bit the fabric if i feel like it's got a bit of creasing in it and then the hanging it to dry i think the weight of the t-shirt kind of smooths it out a bit as it dries and so when you put it on it actually looks fine to me like honestly i don't need my clothes to be like stick straight on me i know it's personal preference if you love ironing your clothes no judgment but i feel like for myself i've gone a lot of time back by not having to iron every little thing in my wardrobe so yes i might iron a shirt here and there but for the most part ironing is not for me number 10 is buying clothes that need a special bra i am so done with that part of my life like you know the strapless things or the things that have a weird cutout here that you need to have a special bra because otherwise it's showing the strap i'm just not about that i either don't buy items like that or i find an alternative for that and even like for example my bodysuits that i love to wear i actually don't wear a bra with them i just put these little insert pads that you can buy on things like amazon i put them in like on the inside of the bodysuit and sewed them there and that works perfect but honestly for the most part i don't buy anything that requires a, any special type of bra number 11 sorry if you don't want to hear any sort of period talk feel free to skip ahead but i quit using tampons and i switched to a menstrual cup personally i chose the better cup i think we all know plasticky tampons are not really great for you and they can mess up with your hormones and having my condition endometriosis i've become a lot more aware of these things and i'm trying to be more intentional about stuff like this and so i switched to better cup honestly i was so terrified by it and it also sounded so weird to me for the longest time but i gave it a try and honestly i'm never going back it's amazing it's a lot less messy than tampons depending on your flow you only have to empty it out in the morning and at night and it's just amazing because honestly sometimes it feels like you're not even on your period that's if you don't have a condition like endometriosis but it just makes the whole experience every month a lot easier for myself number 12 is buying lots of decor without a special place in mind i used to go into the shops and buy things that i thought were cute things that oh i saw this on instagram and i felt like it would look nice and aesthetic but i didn't really have a space for it in my home or i didn't have a, a designated area where i wanted to put it and i definitely feel like i was over buying decor items nowadays i keep my decor quite minimal and simple only a few things that you know kind of bring a little bit of something to our house but i don't have a ton of knickknacks 
or anything like that. Number 13 that I quit is letting things pile up and whether that's laundry or dishes, I'm trying my best to keep on top of it and you know, I have two small children so it's not like I can spend all day cleaning my house but I can implement small routines here and there. I did a separate video on one minute habits that you know take such a little amount of time and effort but give you such big results but being more minimal and having less stuff actually means you don't have that many things to pile up anyway number 14 is keeping lots of hand-me-downs from one child to the next now it might be because there's quite a big age gap between my children there's a five-year age gap and also i have a boy and a girl and their seasons are kind of a bit off i did initially keep some baby items from my first baby for my second and uh, for one when we were going through infertility that kind of made me feel sad a lot of the times just kind of thinking that i have those clothes that i may or may not ever use again and second when we did have our second baby i realized a lot of them actually didn't fit when they were supposed to my second baby is also a lot tinier she's a tiny girl yeah a lot of things don't really match up the seasons and i've kept clothes for over five years to then never use them again and just pass them on to a charity shop or to friends and so it made me realize it's kind of wasteful and you know just a waste of resources for me to keep in my loft a whole bunch of baby clothes or children's clothes that they may or may not ever wear again and so now i don't really keep a lot of hand-me-downs if i have certain items that i really love and i do want to pass on i do keep some on in the loft but there's not that many oh and also it takes a lot of mental load for you to remember what clothes you have up there to go through them every time they grow or season changes it just takes a lot of effort to keep up on top of that number 15 is notifications on my phone i've mentioned this before and i think people were surprised because i am on instagram you know i'm on social media obviously but i actually don't keep notifications on on my phone whether that's instagram or YouTube or whatever social platform might it might be I do keep you know phone calls and messages and things like that because I might get you know a friend message me or I might get phone calls from school or whatever but for the most part my notifications are off and if I do have the time to go on social media I can always go and, and check my messages or likes or whatever on Instagram social media is always there for you when you want to go and spend time on it but I don't need it to constantly distract me and pull my focus away number 16 is watching or listening to the news I have quit trying to keep on top of the news for quite a while now I realized what a negative effect it was having on me I think maybe because I'm quite empathetic and so things that happen in the world can affect me a lot and make me feel really down and I think there's a fine balance here because of course you want to be informed and be aware of what's going on in the world but at the same time I don't feel like I need to be constantly on there reading every news because it's just gonna affect my mental health and I do feel like I need to be in like a strong good mental health for my children and for my family so I can't really afford to do that and even though I don't really watch the news anymore I do hear all the news anyway because inevitably you will see it on social media you will see it on Instagram you will hear from your friends it's not like you're gonna be out of the loop completely you're still gonna hear about the important things going on in the world it's just gonna impact your mental health less if you are not constantly exposed to it number 17 is people pleasing and i say i quit this but i still feel like it's in progress maybe i'm not quite fully there but it's something i'm trying to do i'm definitely someone or i used to be someone who did care a lot about what other people thought of me and trying to make other people happy even if it's at the expense of your own happiness and so i've definitely been more intentional about that and trying to preserve my own energy and kind of my own strength because I feel like I needed to have that in order to be able to take good care of my children and to be a present mom. Number 18 thing that I quit is overstopping my to-do list. I used to make this huge to-do list on my phone and it would honestly make me feel overwhelmed and it would also make me feel less inclined to go and tackle things or I would tackle two or three things and then it kind of makes you feel like a failure because you didn't check all of them or most of them. And so what I do now is for my daily to-do list, I pick usually about three, maybe four tasks that are my main things that I want to accomplish for the day. Like today I'm filming two videos and I've got a reel going on Instagram. So those are my three main tasks that I'm doing for my work. Simplifying my to-do list helps a lot. Number 19 is feeling like we need to have expensive family trips every year. And I know this is something that can be such an easy thing to compare, especially on social media, because when people go on holiday, they will always post pictures because, I mean, why wouldn't they, right? They're having fun and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, 
but they're having fun they want to share that and it's probably one of the times where they get to spend a lot of quality time with their family so that's something to celebrate but we do need to be mindful when we go on social media and see all of those pictures to remember that you don't have to do that you don't have to go on expensive family trips every single year in order to make fun memories and for our children i do think spending time with us and doing something fun together whether that's you know in the uk or a different country they're not going to care that much as long as they're with you for us also since we were trying to buy a house and we bought this house five six months ago we had been trying to save up for a deposit which can be a huge chunk of money right and so we had to prioritize that over taking a lot of family trips and this is not to say i don't want to travel of course not i think it's a very enriching experience and we do want to travel in the future but it's also okay not to compare and to feel like you're missing out just because you're not going on five family trips this year number 20 it's gonna be controversial i don't know but we quit using credit cards a while ago we're actually never really big credit card users but i feel like this is a thing in the financial space they tell you that having a credit card and you know having a good credit score is going to help you buy a house get a mortgage or whatever and i don't feel like that's the case now i'm not a financial expert i'm just speaking from our experience but i think having a credit card can actually impact you negatively because it's way more likely that you will spend money that you don't have that's what credit cards are supposed to do right mm -hmm. and so for us we stopped using credit cards altogether we don't own one anymore we only have debit cards so i we only spend the money that we actually have and we actually make and it saves a lot of money anyway because having a credit card and possibly you know having overpayments if you have to pay the interest on that that's gonna be huge it's gonna cost you a lot of money that's just something we quit using number 21 we quit exchanging gifts my husband and i just because we have to right just because it's christmas just because it's your birthday or whatever occasion it might be we do exchange gifts sometimes like if i have an idea of something i think my husband would really like and i know he would use maybe i will buy that for him but the thing is once you're we're like a grown-up i feel like i don't need to buy him stuff because he will usually buy it for himself and the same for me like obviously he's not gonna know what dress i want or what book i want to read or you know unless i specifically tell him and i feel like sometimes there's this thing that you know the strength of the relationship is how much your partner knows you know exactly what to buy for your birthday where i think there's more to a relationship than that and for us it's not about that so we quit buying random gifts for each other i'm really wondering what you thought of my list i'm wondering if you can relate to any of these and let me know in the comments below what you would add to this list what have you quit that simplified your life i would love to hear from you because maybe i'll grab some of your tips to implement in my life but yeah i hope this was helpful and i will see you in my next video bye guys